What's up, Fortnite fam? It's your favorite Fortnite commentator, Monster DeFace, and today we are back with another Fortnite Battle Royale video. In today's video, we're taking a look at Chap, AV, and NG, who you can see right above me has popped off in the Lackey's Trio Cup. And as always, before we jump into this VOD review right here, if you enjoy competitive content, news, and anything to do with Fortnite community, don't forget to, of course, subscribe to this channel and like these videos to continue to keep up with what we do around town on this side of part right here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We're jumping in with Edgy, AV, and Chap. And as always, ladies and gents, we're going to spin things up with that battle map. So say it with me. Press that number six to enter into the satellite mode. This replay here is brought to you from the Lackey's Cup. Like you guys may know, Lachlan, one of the larger content creators in the OCE side of things. Here we have a south to north side bus. Not too bad. Actually splitting straight up the map here. And we're jumping in with the authority. And you can see there's going to be a lot of movement here. What I'm going to do my uh, to try my best here is to follow Edgy's perspective. So apparently this trio is no longer active. So with that, we're going to see what Edgy can bring to the table because I'm excited for Scented to be stepping into the NAE scene and doing back up with, uh, with Edgy here. So new trios are going to be made every single day. Stay tuned for that stuff. As we jump back into perspective, as always, ladies and gents, the mug of the day, the newest to the collection, y'all, we have the Attack on Titan, Colossal Titan. Shout out to all you anime nerds out there. If you're one like me, feel free to like the video. All right. I'm also fam growing every single day. But here we have, we have Edgy. We have AV. We have Chat, man. I don't know what any of these trios are going to be doing or any of these individual players are going to be doing now that we have all these newfound trios stepping in. What are your guys' thoughts on players like Bizzle stepping away from Kamamon and Clicks? These are some crazy shakeups in the trio scene. Not that it matters too much because the main focus of competitive right now, at least for the up and coming major FNCS, is going to be solos. But hey, it still matters, right? Because we have cash cups and other kind of third party tournament happening. So, regardless of what, still some exciting stuff, still some craziness happening. I'd love to know you guys' thoughts on all that kind of stuff. Because Doves, Meg, and Vizzle, that's going to be kind of crazy. You can see a couple of frags happening off the back here. Chap's going to kick things up nice and hot here. He's going to find himself one. The shakedown occurred. They hunted down. So Avian and Edgy are also going to find themselves. Nice little one-piece chicken nugget. And everyone here is vibing for the cause. Kind of digging Edgy's fit here, not going to lie. The boy looking kind of clean with it. More shots going down. That's them just clearing out. The agents here. I'm going to go and zoom out for a second to see if there's anyone else here at the authority. No. Looks like that first little three-piece trio that they wipe up is going to be all that it takes to clear this place out. I saw a little conspiracy going around that there's launch pads more likely to spawn at some of these major POIs. Thoughts? Any truth? Any merit? No. Maybe. No way Chap gets bodied. Wait, what? <laughs> Chaps versus Jules. Who you got your money on? Looks like the bets are all in and Jules comes out on top. Damn, chap. Listen, bro, if you need tips on how to fight players, I'll let your boy, right? I got the tutorial for days. Edgy coming in to save the day, though. Not before taking a little punishment from Jewel, too. What in the world? <laughs> All right, so he's got to save the boy here. Dang, man. This happens, like, almost consistently now, video after video. We're watching these bots. You know, give, give it to the pros, man. I'll know some of that. <laughs> Listen, I don't know what's up with that, but it seems like it's happening. Some of you guys might be thinking, hey, yo, but monster, what you drinking, man? What's in the mug? Listen, we got we got Caribbean Delight, all right? And also, shout out to everyone that picked up some Caribbean Delight and that Amazon affiliate link. I see y'all in the comments. Um, What do you guys think about it? Flavor? Thoughts? It's a little medium roast. It smells great, okay? I like to get mine whole bean and then grind them, right? Keep that coffee nice and fresh as a per need basis but i guess that's what makes me enthusiast regardless of what though let's check out where this map is going right here this is gonna be pretty much landing right on top of them okay so we have a north western style map the authority being the hometown so many players on the outer edges of the zone here they're gonna have to be making a big trek and rotate across the zone here let's see what's up nearby we have some players off in the mountains i'm gonna zoom in see if i get some nameplates no those are not gonna load for us unfortunately as we know, these tournaments are somewhat scattered from player to player, so you never know what trios are actually going to be in the game. 
that little bit of a mix up in the air. You know, these are not completely private lobbies. The benefit though, the grappler in hand and the drum gun for chap looking pretty good. Upgraded hunting rifle, pretty nice. Launch pad on deck for the boy. There's AV hitting up. The volts now. 30 seconds left on the clock till things make a big move here. How's these inventories looking? We have six grenades on Edgy. Man, grenades still being competitive Fortnite. Kind of interesting. You would think that from the last season, we kind of learned our lesson as opposed to what nades in a team-based game modes, the strength of having nades can do. And it's crazy to think that not everyone even needs to stack them. Just one person holding six. You find the right team, you split them. You guys chuck three or four of them and it's over, right? Those guys are going to get punished for it. Pretty ridiculous. Charge shotguns. This is another question I want to ask you guys, the community. We've had our time to play with the charge shotgun. Unfortunately, it's not in creative, which I have my own conspiracies about why Epic hasn't put it in there. I'm not going to jump into that. What are your thoughts on the charge shotgun? I feel like day one, there was negativity. Later into day one, you had a mix up in the community. Come day two, day three, we had some people having stances. It's been in for a few weeks now. What are your thoughts on the charge shotgun? Have you guys grown comfortable with it? Are you guys not a major fan of it? And if you're not a major fan of it, is it because you're not good with it? Or is it because you genuinely think that it isn't a great weapon? And to take it a little bit further, when you're running the tactical shotgun, what are your experiences with a tactical versus a charge shotgun? Because think about it. It's one thing to not like the weapon. It's another thing to not like it because you're bad with it. And whenever you go against it, you hate it because you get bodied. So genuinely curious on how you guys feel about it. I see some community driven responses here talking about they want that combat back in the game. I don't know. To give my perspective on it. I think the charge is cool and all. Definitely prefer the normal pump. Love the idea of a new mechanic being brought to Fortnite though. Right? This whole new kind of pacing that having the charge shock and brings to the game is cool. It really is cool. But having it as a, a sole option for a big single hit, I don't know about that, man. It just feels like uh, a big nerf to that type of class. But regardless of what, it's kind of where we stand. I'll be checking the comment section, seeing how you guys feel about it. We can jump into the discussion. Is like I said, even here in the chat, there's so many different perspectives going on. Okay, let's take a look. These guys are just chilling though right now. AV right here inspecting his weapon. Clearly looks semi AFK. Not too sure what's going on with that guy. Just waiting now, buying time. Yo, let's see. Yo, did he desync out of this game? Oh, that would be sad times if he did. That will be straight sad times if he did. The zone's only collapsing here. There's another trio coming in now. Mind you, they're just here chilling. All right, AV's back in the game. All right, for a second there, I thought he might have desynced out. Here's Elige, P God, and Jelty. Fire trio coming in hot. I haven't seen them do too many big things, man. Even during the Intel Elite Cup that we just recently hosted, third party tournament. What happened during that was still sad for the Hispanic trio, Jelty, P God, and Elige. They pretty much, I think, came dead last in the tourney or second to last, which was unfortunate. It kind of sucks that in every tournament, regardless of, you know, how good you are, somebody's got to come out on the bottom, man. Someone's going to come out on the bottom. Those are the kind of things that happen. Those are the kind of things that are going to happen, man. I don't know if you guys have played in a tournament and didn't do as good as you thought you would do or as good as you'd like to have done. I'm sure we've all been there in a competition setting. Definitely sucks as a feeling. But you gotta, you know what I mean? It's how you bounce back from those moments. It's how you define yourself. Here's Chap though. Look at a single out this team. So they've already put some shots down in Chaps. Kind of moving around right now, looking to regroup with his squad mates. Top and hot, uh, hopping around perspective to perspective right now. Edgy trying to get his farm on here. Definitely has some decent material on the squad here. I'm seeing his metal completely capped out, which is nice. But the wood lackluster for the squad here they're gonna need a lot more to farm you gotta appreciate the way they set up this defense here using cones so that they can you know properly angle out and around this entire corner here without spending too much material 
also allowing them to have full protection and vision around the outskirts tags being of the utmost importance so gathering your storm uh storm surge is pretty important even if you don't get storm surge early in the run the likelihood of it coming for some reason in trios and squad based game modes towards the later portions of the game is like crazy like come zone seven when it's like 30 plus people live you tend to see in trios it be a nightmare for some squads man all these tags super crucial super important let's just look at the map really quickly oh so the zone is gonna land right on top of them they have dead center there's no reason for these guys to move not unless they want to like pull off some cheeky wood farm which that's not even crazy important he's doing the mark here possibly to see if there's anyone poised up in there point in case being that they could just grenade them out to see edgy's playing defense chap getting his maximum farm on right now trying his best here av still in the game looks like he's having some troubles a little distracted second time now we see him go semi afk someone just asked me what are my thoughts on edgy leaving chap in av yeah i don't know man like i said it's it's important because we get a little shake up in squads and stuff like that but it's not that important in the grand scheme of things because again we're in solo season this is solo season guys like fncs solos is what really gonna matter this is all just filler content man this is like watching an anime and you get to the filler episode oh some people are cool with the filler episodes you know some of them are pretty nice others they hate them they want to skip them i understand i ain't gonna blame you but with that i feel the same way about these trios and whatnot this is this is just this is just filler time man it don't even matter it don't even matter till it matters and when it's gonna matter it's on a solo season. all right 800 damage above the storm surge threshold we we're just talking about why this is gonna be important this center zone this positioning that they have right now is ridiculous it's so good it's so good av needs to stop making that edit by the way he's done that multiple times now he's getting hawked on by maverick Teresa here Oh, they're going to jump on the zip line. Wrong place to be for the controller gamer. He's got his eyes set on the prize here. I wonder if they're going to be looking to nade this squad out. This is the perfect spot for them to be in. They already have that height over them. They can easily lob straight down onto them, catch them into the explodes. Doesn't seem like that's going to be a big issue right now. As they're nearly a thousand above the zone here. Just vibing, trying to play for that end game right now. See Chap here even marking a squad out, being that they're getting griefed up right now by Stinkers. Inching his way ever so closer and closer to see what he can kind of angle in for the team there. Nice little hold here. Let's go ahead and pull out the camera though. Let's take a look. What's going on? How many players are now looking to get into the zone here? Things are becoming quite congested here. Things are becoming quite congested here. You can see Clank, Javas, and Chase. This is that other team that we saw kind of park up below. The other squad over here, Maverick. The Maverick trio. Okay, so Teresa, Tio, Camu. Over to the side getting griefed by all the lobby. This is what we talked about before. Someone asked, Monster, I'm struggling to get the champions. How do I do it? I say, hey, you got to put yourself in, in two situations, all right? Rule number one, never lose a fight. You never lose a fight, you'll keep gaining points. Rule number two, Never put yourself in multiple big eye lining positions, okay? I'm talking about opening the line of sights to multiple squads. Look at here. You have like two trios up here. You have these guys who were already throwing stinkers at them. You have these boys that can see you up top. You have the, the crew over here that can like literally angle in on you as well and jump into the grief fest. That's what it's all about, man. Positioning, never losing battles. If you don't die, you can't lose. You'll make your way up the full chain. It's just the honest truth. This is the honest truth, dude. But here it is. Chat still inside getting his farm on right now. Dude, he's expended a lot of material. How is he still not maxed out? Last we checked in, he was max brick. And now he's found himself just blowing more and more mats here. Come to center zone. He is going to pull it again, though. So I guess it doesn't really matter. The likelihood of them getting it was pretty high anyways. Another storm surge is in effect here. Once again, 72 players in the game. We need two more to drop here in order for the storm surge to become... Uh, turned off, I guess, at this point here. Next storm surge is actually at 50 mark. It's pretty crazy. Think about this. They've been idle here for quite some time. They still hold an abundance of medium bullets between the crew here. Edgy being the most proactive is going to have the least amount at the moment. 
But for what it's worth, these guys have definitely found some serious uh, ammunition here. Shows you the power of the authority, man. To be able to fill out a, a full-on trio like this and have them comfortable with how active they've been up until this point, it's pretty decent. It's actually pretty decent. It's a great drop spot. Great drop spot. And no, guys, Marauders no longer give Storm Surge. Not anymore. That was patched in the previous update. That's a pretty big update, too, if you think about it. Because now tagging players, like, previous to the Marauder change, these guys would be in, like, a trash situation. Because killing one squad and catching some tags was just not enough. You literally needed, like, thousands and thousands of damage just in order to break over, like, people that were exploiting the fact that you could farm Marauders. You can see, uh, who was that right there? Acorn and Jack? Who's on their trio right now? Who is on their trio? So you have Nico, Jack, and Acorn. That's a pretty power team right there, man. Jack and Acorn. Fire little duo. Been on the up and up. Definitely at the cream of the crop as far as competitive competition goes on the scene. As you cast in all kinds of blanks right here, though. Sucks to suck with the shot here. Not quite finding anything. Still three Elims for the team here. Mid game going in their favor. Playing it nice and, nice and proactively with that chill high ground hold right here. This is something different too, right? When you think about the pace of solos versus the pace of trios, mid game, you're never safe. Never, ever safe. You, and, and the crazy part is you park up too soon, like you find a spot to chill too soon and you get naded out. You know what I mean? This is why you have to be proactive. You have to put up pressure towards other players so you don't get like instanated and prepped up on. You gotta keep people uh, at your distance as much as you can. Still vibing out here. 18 seconds now. If you look down on the bottom right clock. So the zone's going to fully close in. The zone's going to reveal where exactly they're going to have to make a big move on here. I'm going to zoom in a bit. This is a very interesting zone here. The canals kind of separating the major land masses at this point. Pretty much into a little, a little triangle here. And all right, it's going to get majority pulled towards the authority here. So... The boys on top, completely safe for another zone. Not to mention they already have a launch pad, which is crazy. Everyone else is going to have to make a move. You can see Acorn, Jack, and Nico insta-rotating down the side here. I'm already hearing nades come out. They're going to find Jelty and crew setting up the big distance push here. He's going to do this one solo dolo here. One and two and three. So he's going to throw all three of them at Jelty. Let's see if he'll find the mark here. A little bit of a... Server hiccup there. He's not going to find them at all. They are going to end up building out and blocking that. Unfort. Edgy switching back now to the sniper here. Let's see how many more people have to rotate. You have two, three, four, five squads outside of the zone right now in the back half. Lazar slacks keys following in on Confin. Ocoats there. They already uh, found themselves a little knocked. There's another squad there. That's actually kind of crazy. Big fights happening on the outer edges here. Big fights happening on the outer edges here. Again, these guys have pulled every single zone this round. It's no surprise why they're going to pull a victory here. It's what you do with the zones, though, that really matters after the half and half out zone, which we're going to find out in 60 seconds. This is where things are really going to start kicking up. Crazy to think that they haven't found a... Uh, knock it all with all these shots they've been landing taking their time for sure for sure but nothing being converted of it other than staying above the storm surge nothing being converted not just yet not just yet look how many players are based up on the mountain over there my gosh those guys are seriously in some trouble if you're on the uh if you're on the back zone over here these guys are gonna be in some serious trouble if they don't catch half in half out that's gonna be straight up air traffic for days for the crew out here. Let's take a look at how these guys are holding us. So you guys can understand. You can see that they're just perched up. Each watching a different angle. AV on the back half. Edgy on the front. Chap let out. On this other little brick. Kind of catacomb he's created there. Down below. Tons of action. Players in box fights looking for their frags right now. Go ahead and jump into chat for a second. I think he just extended his base a little bit more to give him uh, some protection. 
from off in the distance and half and half out is going to pull towards him. All right, this is actually ridiculous. This is like what you would call like rigged, okay? This is basically rigged. Look at how many players now have to cross towards them. Everyone on that mountain, that's going to be the focus point for sure. These guys just pulled another half and half out. Mind you, as they are no longer a trio, we're going to see how things are going to happen as the scene shakes up a little more to, uh, with time to come here. Chap's going to find a little drop there on NWI. Nice for him. Full thirst as well, being converted. Chat, or excuse me, Edgy here now looking completely out to the southern team, the southwest squads that have to make the big move. He only has 90 bullets in the mag. Or 30 in the mag, 90, uh, 60 reloads to back him up with. Team's launch padding out. I wonder if at this point it'd be more beneficial for the entire squad to full focus as a team on the southwestern team. Instead, they're looking towards the east there. Not going to find anything. Well, this should be free frags for them right now. We'll see, though. We'll see. There's another team poised up on height. So this is kind of interesting. Seeing a squad take height across from them. That's the risk. That's the gamble right now. Whoever gets first moving, it's going to matter as far as height goes. We've seen what the grappler can do. We've seen what the shockwave can do as well, being in this situation here. Chap, all that extra farming that he did down below is allowing him to kind of extend his base outwards here. One RPG will be disaster for this squad here, but that's not going to be an issue right now. Chap gathering up as much brick as he can before he gets to kind of get out of the storm zone here. We'll see now if RNG blesses them again. And no, it's not going to go in their favor. Instead, it's going to land on the squad all the way across here. So they're going to have to push out to the north. What's this? Northwest here. So I don't think any of these teams actually end up pulling zone. No, they're going to have to go this way. You can see Edgy puts down the early mark for the squad. So even these guys who, you know, put in all this resource to build this monstrous base here, they're going to be forced out. There's actually no one in the safe zone right now. No one even remotely close to it. See how this ends up playing out. They go with the early launch pad, the late launch pad, the high pad. They decide to eat zone with their six chugs. There's a lot of options here that they can make. There are a lot of options they can make here. The team out in front, though, can't see their name, but we can see that they've already decided to start branching their way out. Getting the full-on tunnel, half tunnel across, back wall open, conserving material for those guys. They're going to go with the full pad here, down and across. All right, the squad that was in front starts firing away. Chop's going to be the first to touch down. Edgy's going to land right next to him. Builds in full metal, inches in. Chap leaves the wall nice and open for them. Let's go ahead and pause here just to make sure the whole crew is together. Okay, yes, they are. I see AV, Chap, and Edgy here now. What layer have they decided to go on? Not necessarily on the heights. They're, you know, somewhat of a mid-tarp here. Mid-grounds. This is the most congested layer, though, if you really think about it, because everyone's going to have to come up and over the wall. The most... Uh, uncongested layer is going to be, I guess, height, bottom-ish. We'll see, though, how it ends up playing out. We'll see if other teams end up jumping low or staying on the layer that they're all on already. The focus coming in here. They're looking to break into the launch pad here. They're going to end up using that as well. So another free cross here. Once again, Edgy now in front. He's got the decision to make. He's going to land on that mid layer. He's right next to Slacks right here as they... Has this little lag off in the replay client. We'll see how it ends up playing out. My gosh. If it's lagging for the client, you can imagine how it feels being in the game there in this situation. Some people don't play well in competitive settings because you don't play enough practice under these um, intense kind of frame drop situations. I'll be honest, it is a huge, huge benefit knowing how to play when it feels like this. Okay? It is a huge benefit knowing how to play when it feels like this. There's things you can do, things that you probably shouldn't do. Very, very lucky though. Another zone pretty much favors them as they get in front of this one as well, using another launch pad. Remember, with every pad they burn here, or recycle for that matter, they save hundreds of materials, if not arguably thousands. Nice to get ahead of the zone here. He's gonna lay some shots down though. Chad looking for the back angle. He's gonna catch Zaddy. Very nicely done there. Now you can see he's lost his way from his team because they all started inching out in front of him. Notice what Chap is doing here. Something to think about if you're in this situation. He was not blocking his backside. This is a bit dangerous. You'll notice what most players are doing this kind of tarp, especially if you're by yourself. You'll just put the floor down and then the ramp right underneath you, right? So that you can get it behind you as opposed to burning three material every single time here. 
Um, just something to think about while also blocking out your backside. Little conservation you guys can try to implement into your gameplay. Not that I'm overly critiquing them at this moment uh, because they're doing pretty well recycling the pads here. Material though, halfway through. Pretty much about a third on each of them. Who's on height? We can't tell, but I can tell you that underneath height are some serious players. I see Nico, Acorn, and Jack, a full trio still in the game. D Roller and his crew still nearby. Up top, skins that I do not quite recognize. These are the most generic competitive skins in the game. The Aura skin, the freaking, uh, the, what's that, the Maverick there? Correct me if I'm wrong. All right, chat charging up the, the hissing shotgun to charge. Game time though. Looking to control as much action, as much of their layer as possible. Just like that, they find themselves a free frag and more material to go. That's huge for them. Absolutely huge for them right now. Good read. Another player up above. They're doing a really good job singling out the players that are above them right now. It's gonna be another recap for them. So now Teresa falls as well. What's this chap really finding these frags here? Looking up on the layers. Finally, we got a team that actually glances for height early now, so put yourself in Chap's situation, his team situation. They have a nice wide catacomb down below, so they completely are owning this layer. Anyone above this layer, since they have full control right now, you can see that they're opening those edits and they're glancing upwards. Height right now is not putting enough pressure on everyone else. The reason I say that is because if they were, these other teams would not be having the luxury of looking around. Also, there'd be more players on the bottommost layer. You find that when height is putting some serious pressure down, the bottom layers tend to collapse and congest on top of one another. So height's not necessarily doing too good of a job right now with height. Not that I know their circumstance by any means, but just shows that it's allowing for the team on the low ground to really dominate right now. So Maverick is going to fall in. We already know this team's been kind of clapped. The new AV is going to be on the side angle. Yes, he is going to be able to find something here. His teammates up above. AB working his way around. Beautiful angling there. Good movement. Find himself right back in. AB now four eliminations. Edgy leading out the tarp here. Chap once again looking up for height. Trying to make the edit there. He goes for it. The grappler coming into full effect now. The trade, the HP trade was worth it because he does have three chug splashes on deck. Big pressure coming in. The whole team's up top now. Big pressure. Here for keys and edgy's gonna find the huge shotgun shot well played launch pad comes out it's not gonna be enough though not by any means he's gonna try and land on edgy see if edgy ends up making an edit here it's a 3v1 situation the axe for disrespect and he finds it on player 61 and just like that the one two pack a punch from edgy <laughs> to close out in flashy fashion the edits the control right there you gotta love it and all right, Edgy's the one who has, again, abandoned this squad here to go team back up with Scented. He thought that gameplay was good. We're going to be seeing his team come in soon. We'll see how that ends up happening, how it plays out for them. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for checking out this review. Welcome back to another Moss and Morning. It's your boy, MBF. I'm getting out of here. Don't forget to like this video. Peace, y'all. Jeez. Damn, the disrespect, boys. Holy. Yo, sauce. Thank you for the 38-year sub. My guy.